Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here, and so today we're going to be working on installing a carburetor on this Kohler Courage 20 horsepower here. Uh, the 19, the 20, I believe the 21 are all the exact same carb basically. So we've got this one that was sent to us by HIPAA Carbs, and I'm really happy to have this. This is the revised edition that has all the safety stuff that's been done to it, because the stock Kohler carb is extremely dangerous. These things are notorious for catching themselves on fire. They're notorious for all kinds of problems. And so what I'll do is I'll grab the camera and I'll show you the difference between these two carbs so you know what to look for in the future. Now, this is for my ice racer. It's been set up for racing, so it's got one or two little add-ons that are different than the stock setup. But once we get this plate off and we get into the carburetor, everything is the same as stock. So what we're going to do is grab the camera, show you the difference between these two and what was upgraded and changed. That way you know to look in the future. Here we go. So here is the side that we'll see when we go to take the carburetor off. This is the choke side. And what you're going to see is right here, see how this base cup comes up like this? versus this one being laid in and it's got a key in it so that it won't turn when you tighten it that's because this gasket that's in here on these goes bad and they blow out and they dump gas down right straight onto the frame now right underneath that frame right there where it's dumping gas is this little plate that comes down and right here is where your muffler would normally sit well, it would have a muffler if this wasn't a racer with a straight pipe, but you get the idea. So you've got this nice area that catches grass over the top of the muffler with a gasket that likes to blow out and dump gas. The other thing about these is that if it has this older style of shutoff kill solenoid, you want to replace these as soon as you see them. You want to replace them with one like this that has a plug style. And the reason being is because the bottom of this rots out. And yet again, it pours gas directly straight through this and onto the frame, which is what this one does. You can actually see right here where there's been a fire already. And you can see underneath how all of this area is nice and perfectly clean. That's because glass uh, gas makes a heck of a cleaner. So all of this area here has been cleaned off by gas pouring down to where the muffler should be. So there's my thing about why it is it's worth it to buy the HIPAA carb that has had the upgrades done to it versus running the stock Kohler carb that is just a death trap and waiting to burn down your garage. All right, let's see if we can get into here without having to go and bounce you guys around too much. So this is my spring return for my throttle. If you're ever going to put a throttle on one of these, there's a bar right here that connects right to the gas. And this one that's in back here is your choke. If you need to have a choke override on one of these. If you're dealing with any of the Cub Cadets that have a choke override, that's where that choke connects, is the bar back there. So this is going to unscrew and come off of here. And these have a really bad habit of getting stuck inside of these and taking the whole entire rod out. So if that happens, don't be surprised. There we go. Oh, this one definitely had somebody living in it. See, there's one there. So that ended up taking the rod right out with it. See, it's supposed to be embedded in the plastic. So just be careful. Put it back in nicely. And this has been opened up for racing. You see that it's nothing but the mat there. So there should be a foam piece in the upper part right here. And there should be one of these in the lower part just like that when you put it together. But like I said, this one's been gutted for racing. So all this one is is just that right there. 
Now the next thing we're going to have is we're going to have a couple of 10 millimeters in here. This one here is really, really tight up against things. So sometimes it comes out easy, other times it's a pain in the neck. There is a hidden bolt right there that you have to remove in order to take this out. So right now you're seeing this clip a little bit out of place, I'm sorry. Hidden bolt right here. And you've got to wedge that socket right into there to get to that one. So take that out. There we go. Got that socket wedged in there. Now, one thing I'd like to point out while we're here, before I forget it, is if you do this carburetor thing and it still doesn't seem to be getting gas, on the newer version of this, this pump is actually hidden underneath the cover in behind where this oil dipstick is. So if you go to do this and for some reason your carburetor is not getting gas, there is a chance that that pump is clogged up, isn't working, and it's hidden underneath here. So at this point, we'll pull this off. Now, on this side here off the camera, what you can't see is that there is a hose that is connected to the valve cover. You should be able to see that now. So we're going to pull that and we're going to set that aside. As you can see, this one has rotted out and has been taped together, but it is what it is. So while you're in here, make sure you take out all the rat's nest, because this is so fake. You can literally fit your entire hand up in here. It's giant. There's plenty of room to be able to get in there. So what we have now is we've got our choke connection. So if I come over here and I move the choke, we're going to see that's going to move. And if I move the throttle, we're going to see that the throttle is going to move right here. See? Just like that. And this is our connection for our gas going into it. So we're going to pull that. Now... I've already got a fuel shut off in line with the fuel in this, so there shouldn't be too much gas in this. But just in case, what you want to do is pull it off and quickly lift it and stuff it up behind the pump. If you lift it and stuff it up behind the pump, then it's usually higher than it'll drain out. So now what I'll do is I'll see if I can get the camera down here. Well, we talk about what's next. So let me pull you guys down here. Now, what you're going to have is right here, you're going to have where normally from here to here you would have a ground. So if we look at this one, I've modified this carburetor for racing, which means that the solenoid tip on the inside of here has been removed. This solenoid just acts as a plug when you modify these for racing. But this is your positive side, and when you turn your key in your ignition, you should see 12 volts sitting at this when your key is in the on position. If you don't, then this solenoid won't open and your carb won't work. This is your ground, and you have to have this ground going to the chassis. And the reason being is because this right here, this backer, is plastic. There's a spacer here between the block and the carburetor, and it is pure plastic, so there is no ground. That's why you have to have that connected to that bolt for ground. So at this point, we should be able to pull this, like so. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull it, and you're going to tip it sideways and undo each one of these. Let's see if this one has it. Oh, there it is. So that right there, that's got a clip, and that clip, if you look at it, see that? It's directional. 
it's got a cutout on one side. So you have to get the piece of wire to line up with that cutout in order to come out of there. So I'm going to put you guys back into this and clip you guys in place. Now let's see if I can do this without looking quite so stupid this time. So if we take and we pull the spring and we undo the spring, see right there it's undone. And now we can tip that back and undo that like so. And then this one you have to hold up and you rotate and then pull just like that. So now we've got to take this little clip and we've got to transport this onto the other carburetor. So that little clip there, you just press in and you pull out. Let's see if I can do it on camera here. There it goes. Okay, so we got the clip out. So, before we forget, we're going to make sure to slide our new gasket on. Because it's easy to get monkeying around with this carb, slam it on there, and then forget to put the gasket. So right now, before we do anything else, we're going to slide that gasket on there. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to pop this in. And it's going to suck to do because this is old plastic and it doesn't want to play fair. There we go. You can buy these, by the way, if you end up breaking one. Um, they're a pain in the neck to go and find sometimes, but you can buy them. Okay, so now let's see if we can put that back together. So when we put this back together, our choke rod goes here. Our throttle goes here. And our governor spring goes in this hole right here. So we'll do our governor spring first, just to show you can do it either way. So we'll do our governor spring. We're going to pull it and put the end in and then flip it up. So there we go. We got that side done, as you can see. Now, we're going to tip it back up, put the choke in, and then tip it back up like so. And there is our choke. So if we slide this on, now we will be able to move our choke like so. And this is our throttle here. So that direction would be gas. That direction would be idle. Going to make sure to put our gasket on. Now, at this point... We should connect up our gas line because you cannot get to this to put the gas line on once you have that ginormous outside cover on. So we're going to throw this gas line on right now. Now at this point, making sure not to disconnect our hose, we're going to slowly bring this around. Now see, if I was dealing with the stock carburetor setup, see if you guys can actually see this in film, if I pull that back, that's the wire that comes around and connects in with this wire here. So you need to make sure that is hooked up on a stock setup in order to fire up your solenoid in the bottom or this will not work. And this right here is your ground. 
You can either drive it into the frame with a screw, or you can put it into the side of the block where there's already a spot to do it. Um, the one on the side of the block tends to go and snap on a regular basis. That's why it is I point out that you can go to the frame if you have to. So at this point, we're going to flip this on and flip it around. Whoops, we lost the hose. And you're going to lose that stupid hose numerous times and have to figure out ways to get it to go in. There's a special place in wherever for it. Now, I already had the hidden bolt removed and I just realized it. So I'm going to quickly pick this up. There is a hidden bolt right there that you have to remove in order to take this out. So right now you're seeing this clip a little bit out of place. I'm sorry. Hidden bolt right here. So at this point, we can put our air filter back on. Like I said, we're running a racing setup. So normally you would have a filter here and you would have your sponge filter crammed into the crammed into this All right, at this point, you've got the two 10 millimeters that need to go on. Now, do not use a big ooga on this. You're actually probably better off to do it by hand. And the reason being is because these two studs for the carburetor go into plastic. They do not go into metal. They go into a BS plastic whatever thing on one side. So be careful and do not drive them home for everything that you are worth. You will rip them out. Just a little tap tap. And a little tap tap. And we call it good. Now yet again, we've got the one that ripped out. This is common. We'll just screw it in and not overdo the uga on it. And... Set our filter up and on, which is oftentimes easier said than done. And just getting that lip to line up can be a big giant twit in itself. There we go. And because I have this set up for racing, I need to put my throttle back on. If you ever go to put a gas pedal on one of on one of these motors or any kind of lawn tractor motor of any nature, you need to have a returning pedal because the stock return is nowhere near strong enough or return spring because the stock return is nowhere near strong enough. And all you'll do is just end up having it stick in full throttle. And that can get kind of dangerous at times. So now, we'll see if this thing will fire up for us. Okay. 